Hello everyone, so today we'll be looking at social influence and social change and as always I'll be following along with the green haired girl textbook on the left hand side. So the things you need to know and be able to recognise. Now the AQA psychology specification states this, the role of social influence processes in social change. So what you're going to need to know is what social influence and social change are. Some people get confused over the definitions, aren't sure what they are, and it is really important that you do know what they are because it can be quite likely that somewhere on the paper a definition question will come up. And it is most likely to come up as an item question, and we will have a look at one of these nearer to the end of this presentation. And a lot of students generally do get confused with this spread, so hopefully I'll be able to break it down for you. So we'll now have a look at the definitions of social influence and social change. So if you think of social influence, this is individuals and groups change each other's attitudes and behaviours. So this includes conformity, obedience and minority influence. So think of that entire topic, what we've been looking at in this topic, it includes everything. That is all social influence. And what we're interested in is how groups and individuals change each other's attitudes. That is what social influence is. And then social change, which we'll focus on on this spread, is when whole societies, not just individuals, adopt new attitudes, beliefs and ways of doing things. So examples help here. So the idea that the earth orbits the sun, women's suffrage, gay rights and environmental issues. The special role of minority influence. So what I've done here is picked out the six different points from the textbook that you will need to focus on for AO1 marks. Or if you have an item, you will need to be focusing on some of these points, not necessarily all of them. So the first one is drawing attention to the issue. And this is a commitment sort of process. And some examples of this is demonstration, protests and personal sacrifices. And what it does is provide evidence that there is a social problem that needs dealing with. We also have consistency. So this is where a firm argument is given and the behaviour demonstrates importance to the group. They're consistent in their argument that they're putting forward. We then have deeper processing. So this is a conversion type of thing. You publicly and privately agree. So this is a cognitive aspect and society considers the argument that is put forward, which can then result in a new behaviour or view. We also have the augmentation principle. So this is where if you know that there are constraints for what you want to do, your motive for acting is stronger than the constraints. So this further reinforces the importance of views and it's highlighted to society through public behaviour and actions. We also have the snowball effect. So this is where the group, which is a minority at the start, it gathers support over time. So more and more people gather onto the view being put forward. So the group gets bigger, it gets more support. Imagine a snowball rolling down a hill, it gets bigger as more snow collects on it. And finally, we have social cryptomnesia. So this is where eventually the change happens, but individuals cannot pinpoint exactly when that was. So this is still your AO1 marks. This is lessons from conformity research. Now we have Asher's research. So if you remember there, we've got the dissent in one variation whereby one confederate gave correct answers throughout the entire procedure. And what that did is that it broke the majority. That power that the majority had was no longer there. And what it does when you have one person dissenting, it encourages others to do the same. So dissent does have that potential to bring about social change. We also have environment and health campaigns which exploit conformity processes by appealing to normative social influence. So remember that that is the need to be liked. So by doing this, it encourages others to also do it. So for example, we've got bin it others do. That sort of slogan is a normative social influence type of slogan because it's encouraging others to do it to be liked. And we have social change happens by drawing attention to what the majority are doing. 
So we also have lessons from obedience research. This is still your AO1 marks. So Milgram showed how disobedient role models led to disobedience in genuine participants. For instance, when the Confederate teacher refuses to give shocks to the learner, obedience in the genuine participant reduced. So what we mean by this is the teacher who is the genuine participant is joined by a confederate teacher. Now the confederate teacher refuses to give the shocks to the learner. So what that does is then enables the real participant, that teacher, to also not give the shocks because it makes them think, well, if they're not, then I shouldn't either. So therefore it reduces. Now Zimbardo also comes along and suggests that obedience can be used to create social change through the process of gradual commitment. So Zimbardo puts forward this idea that once you've obeyed a small instruction, it becomes much more difficult to resist a bigger one. And so what happens is that people drift into a new behaviour. Now, this can confuse students here because it says lessons from obedience research, but then it mentions Zimbardo. Now, Zimbardo is definitely conformity, everyone. So he just makes a comment about obedience here, but make sure you always think of Zimbardo as conformity. OK, now we've got our evaluation, so our AO3 marks. So we have research support for normative influences. So this is a strength. So Nolan et al. investigated whether social influence processes led to a reduction in energy consumption in a community. So what they do is they hang messages on doors saying most residents were trying to reduce their energy usage. So that's like group one. And then group two get a different message on their door and it just asks them to save energy and doesn't make any reference to other people. Remember, we're thinking of social change here. And then what they find is that there was this significant decrease in energy in the group which referred to others' behaviour. So that first group where it says that most residents that refers to somebody else. So it's a strength because it shows that conformity can lead to social change through normative social influence. And that normative social influence, if we all remember, is the need to be liked by others. We do it because others are doing it. Okay, a limitation is that the minority influence is only indirectly effective. So Nemeth in 1986 argues that the effects of minority influence are mostly indirect and delayed. So this is a bit of a problem really, because if we're all trying to influence a majority population, so there's a group of us and we're really trying so hard, but it's very indirect and delayed, it's going to be so slow to influence everyone. It's not seen for a long time. The effects of you forcibly saying, follow this, believe this, it's not seen for a long time because the majority, what they do is they focus on the issue at hand. They just look for what the problem is now and not the central issue itself. So they ignore that deep issue that's in the core of the, the fundamentals of whatever you're saying. So therefore, the effects of minority influence are very fragile and its role in social influence can be limited. A further limitation is the role of deep processing. So if you think about Moscovici's conversion study, he suggests that minority and majority influence involve different cognitive processes. So he says that in the minority influence, individuals have to think more deeply than they do in majority influence. But Mackey in 1987 disagrees with this and suggests that it is the majority influence that creates deeper processing if you don't share their views. So if a majority believes something different to us, we're forced to think long and hard about their arguments. So what we can say is that deeper processing is being challenged. And if we're arguing that it's solely related to minority influence, it casts doubt on Moscovici's theory about the idea that minority influence means deeper processing. 
further limitation is barriers to change. So I've put this into a P paragraph at the bottom. So the limitation of social change is that there are barriers. For example, Bisher et al. 2013 found that their participants were less likely to behave in environmentally friendly ways because they didn't want to be associated with stereotypical and minority environmentalists. This suggests that researchers should avoid reinforcing stereotypical views such as environmentalists as tree huggers, as otherwise this will be off-putting to the majority. Therefore, these barriers need to be considered, otherwise it may be difficult to influence majorities. A final limitation is methodological issues. So when we've been looking at social influence leading to social change, what research has done is drawn a lot on Ash, Milgram and Moscovici. Now, we know limitations of these studies, for instance, they use artificial tasks and there's a lot of deception involved and that does really raise doubts about the validity of the explanations. So that can be critiqued and that's quite a nice AO3 to remember. So I've had a little bit of a look about and I could find this question, which is a specimen A level question on a paper one. So the item says this, a small group of environmentally aware sixth form students are campaigning for their school to become paper free for the next six months. Recently, they had a meeting with a group of teachers who represent the teaching staff. The teachers told the students that the school could become paper free if the group of students could convince the rest of the student body it was a good idea. Use your knowledge of conformity and minority influence to explain the factors that will determine how successful the small group of students will be. As you can see, this question has given you that box. That means it wants you to use that box. Really do plan your answer. Students who plan do much better, even though people think it loses time. So this is the mark scheme. Now it's seven marks, which might look a bit confusing to students because normally they don't give these out. But if we look at the mark scheme, it is all AO2 marks, which means that item needs to be referred to a lot. That is where you are going to get your marks from. You need to make sure when you mention those six points that I was on about, if you think they are what you want to include, because that is a lot of what is needed but not necessarily just that you need to look at the minority influence spread here also but if you are going to include those things which you should be you need to make sure that it links to that item so it, it wants you to link to the item yes it's all o2 marks but you must must also include other things you can't just repeat the item it has to come along with other things that aren't mentioned in it like the terms that we've talked about Okay, thank you for listening and best of luck with all your revision.